What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to do a lower third pop-up style text inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out weekly videos helping you guys grow as creators. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to do this pop-up lower third title inside DaVinci Resolve. I've been getting a lot of requests from people to do more lower thirds. This is a really cool one. It even has a subscribe button that pops up within it. So let's dive inside DaVinci Resolve and we'll go from there. So the first thing we're gonna do is hop into the effects library. We're gonna go to effects under the toolbox and we are gonna grab a fusion composition. We're gonna bring it down here. Again, I like to make mine, I don't know, a little bit longer than the standard five seconds. You're also inside the media pool, let me show you, you're going to need some kind of image that is your image. So when it pops up, it'll have your face and it'll look a little more professional, kind of like what it looks like on a YouTube channel page. It's kind of, that's what we're going for in this. So if you don't have that, track it down, look on your computer, find a profile picture of yours that you're wanting to use. It's okay if it's not a circle. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in just a minute, but you definitely are gonna need that. Everything else we can create inside Fusion within DaVinci Resolve, but you are gonna need that profile picture. Once we're inside Fusion, we are gonna go ahead and create a background. The first thing we're gonna do is hit background right here. I'm gonna connect that to our media out. We make this a little bit bigger so we can see. And really you have any choice to do the background, any color you want. I kind of just went with like a grayish black and I wound up turning the alpha down to probably about half, so around 5%. I think I dragged that a little bit lower. That way it pops up and it's still easy to read things, but it's transparent so it's not like a full black bar is coming across your video. The next thing I'm gonna do is with the background selected is I'm gonna add a transform node. I'm actually gonna bring this down to the size that I'm thinking. We'll do right about there, should be good. And we're actually gonna grab it, we're gonna move it over just so it doesn't take up too much. I think that's pretty good. We can always adjust that if we need to later. Then what I like to do is add our image that we have. So I'm gonna grab it, drag it down in here. I'm gonna go ahead and rename that. I'm just gonna put Josh. So I know that that's my profile picture. I'm gonna hit shift in the mouse at the same time, drag it in, bring it up over here. And what I'm gonna do is with the profile picture selected, I'm gonna hit this ellipse tool. You can of course hit shift spacebar to bring it up just the same, but there are those shortcuts right there underneath the video player that I use quite frequently. So if you're not using those, I suggest using those. You will save a lot of time. Inside the ellipse, you can go to the inspector, ellipse one, and you can mess with a whole bunch of different things. Mine, it's actually working just fine. I'm just gonna make the border width as wide as it will go. You can actually move it around, so if it's on your image and you need to move it way over here and get your face in it, whatever it is, you can do all that just to get it perfectly aligned. But for me, it works just fine making the border width as wide as it'll go. Then what we're gonna do is with the picture node selected, I'm gonna hit a transform node. Make sure you add the transform node by selecting the profile picture node first, then hitting a, a transform node. If you hit the ellipse and add a transform, it's gonna mess everything up and it's not gonna work correctly. So we kind of did it in the proper order that it should be. With the transform node selected, we can now size it down and it doesn't move anything at all. I can grab these or I can grab it from the side. We can drag it over here and get it kind of where we want. I think that should work just fine right about there. Kind of digging that, so I'm gonna slide that over here and that works fine just the same right about there. Now what we need to do is start adding some text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit text right here or shift space bar yet again. I'm gonna hold shift and drop it in just the same. Text is in here. I'm gonna go ahead and name this first one. We're just gonna name it Josh Haynes. I'm gonna find a text that I like. I think that one looks pretty good. You can make the size a little bit bigger if you want. I'm gonna mess with the tracking just a little bit. I think that might be just a little too much, that's fine. Then what I like to do is I'm actually gonna go to the paint node and I am going to make it just an outline. That's kind of my go-to thing. If I've got two texts and I want them to be pretty basic, 
but they need to also have a flare to it. Normally I make one an outline and one not an outline. And it kind of just breaks up the monotonous of having two texts that are pretty close. Then what I'm gonna do is click on the text. I'm gonna add a transform node, just the same. I like to keep all my stuff in transform nodes when I can. It makes it so much easier when we add keyframes later. I'm gonna add that right about there. I think it should look pretty good. We can mess with that here in a second. We're gonna add another text. We're gonna hit shift again with the mouse, drag it in there. And in this one, we're gonna type in filmmaker and photographer. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna change that to just a light so it's a lot smaller. I'm gonna size that down a little bit track it out just a little bit do the same thing we are going to add a transform node on that i'm going to bring that down over here size it down Let's move it kind of over in place it's still too big so we'll size it down a little more need it a little bit smaller that should be pretty good Go right about there. I am gonna grab the first text and I'm gonna slide it over, kind of line those two up together. And I think that actually looks pretty good. I do wanna bring this gray box, the background over a little more. So I'm gonna grab it and I'm just gonna slide it over just a little bit more. Cause we haven't added any keyframes. So we still have plenty of time to move things around and fine tune them the way that we like. I do recommend doing that. Get your final look done before you really start adding keyframes. It'll save a lot of time. I'm gonna grab everything and I'm gonna move it down a little bit because mentally I'm thinking this is one little area and then we're gonna add our subscriber thing right about here. Let's go ahead and start keyframing things. So what I like to do is start with the image first. So I'm gonna click on the transform node, again, keeping all these keyframes within the transform node. It's a lot easier when you go back later and you need to tweak things to just look under the transform nodes and know that it's in there. So I'm gonna go over two, three, four, six frames. I think that's pretty good. And I am going to add a keyframe there on size. I'm gonna go over two frames. I'm gonna add a little bit smaller size. And then I'm gonna go over a couple more frames and I'm gonna size it up even more. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go over back over the four frames and we're gonna size it down. That way it kinda has got this pop that when it goes on there, it kinda just pops on the screen and it kind of bounces a little bit instead of just being a hard hit. It looks a little better in my opinion. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on the actual text itself. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the text and we're gonna add a rectangle and we are gonna go ahead and just drag it all the way over here. We're gonna add a keyframe on the center X and Y and we're gonna go over a couple frames there. Should be pretty good and we'll drag that there. Watch that through. There's weird quirks into adding certain nodes into a node tree. Trust me, follow these steps because a lot of people get snagged up on things. If I added the rectangle to the transform node on a title, it's going to mess it up. Like if I click the transform node right now and I add a rectangle to it, you can see it disappears and you're like, oh, well, it's just up at the top. But no, if I drag this down, it's somehow duplicated both of those and it's a weird cork. I'm not really sure why it does it, but all I know is that is not what we want. So we're gonna add it to the text itself. That is just a little snag and little hiccup I saw with inside Resolve. I don't know if it's a glitch or if it's just something I'm unaware of why it's doing that, but that's not what we need. So make sure your rectangle is attached to the text. What we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna go back until we see that there. We'll do about halfway, should be good. We'll add a keyframe on center. We'll go over a couple. We'll do it right there, add another keyframe. We'll go back to the first one and we're gonna drag it the opposite direction. That way when it plays, it's kind of the opposite things are happening. The next thing I'm gonna do is click on the 80 keyframe. I'm gonna click on text number one. I'm gonna make sure I'm under the paint tab under the inspector. I'm gonna add a keyframe on 80. 
and 85. I'm gonna turn it down all the way. I'm gonna go to the text number two. We're gonna add a keyframe on 85, go back to 80, add another keyframe, go back to 85, and we can turn it down. And that, of course, gives us more than enough time to add the subscribe button to pop up after the name and whatever you want underneath. Uh, you could just leave this the way you want it. You don't have to have that subscribe button pop up. It's just kind of completes the look for what I'm going for. But if you don't want that subscribe button to pop up, by all means, make this a little bit longer or shorter and do just exactly that. You can even reanimate this little profile picture to pop back off sooner. And you've basically got just a simple lower third that pops up with your name and what your occupation is or whatever you want to put on the bottom half. I, however, want to add a subscribe button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to right here. We'll go to 86, 87 frames. I think that's what that's at. We're going to add a background node again. And what we're going to do is on this one, we're going to make it red. Let me go ahead and attach that so we can see what's going on. I'm going to add a rectangle on this one. I'm going to make the width smaller, the height smaller. That's pretty good. This corner radius, we can actually curve the corners a little bit. Don't get too crazy with it. I think that's pretty good. I might jump back into the background node and maybe make that just a little bit brighter. I think that looks okay. Then I'm going to click on the background node and I am going to add a transform node so I can move this where I need to. We'll bring it over here. I think that actually wound up being just about perfect size. Maybe drag it over just a little bit more. That's pretty good right there. Then we need to add our subscribe text. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another text, hold shift and end at the same time, drag it in, bring this up here. I think that's pretty good. We'll size that down just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add a transform node to that just because that's what I like to do. I'm gonna bring this down here, drag it over, get that nice and centered up. I actually think I'm gonna jump back into the text and I'm gonna make the tracking just a little bit wider, not too crazy. Jump back and transform, bring it down, kind of center that up just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. We can tweak with that a little bit more, but I'm, I'm okay with the way that's looking right now. I like to have my first kind of titles going up and then my second half going up. You don't have to really go about that, but it's just how my brain works and it works for me. Then we're gonna click on the transform node of the subscribe background button, and I'm actually gonna add a keyframe on size. We're gonna go over one, two, three, four, five. Eh, four should be good, we'll add another one. And on this one, let's actually go ahead and size it up a little bit, not too much. We'll go back over one, two, size it down a little bit and go one, two, we'll size it right there. We'll go to this one and we're gonna size it all the way down. That way it, that way it pops up on the screen. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna click on the subscribe text. I'm gonna find where I want it to. I think right there should be pretty good. We're gonna to go to the paint tab and we're gonna add a keyframe. Go over maybe three, four frames. Add another one. And we'll go ahead and fade that on the first one. That way it kind of just fades on and I'm digging that. I think that looks good the way it is. The last thing we gotta do is animate this out really quick and I think I'm gonna change it up instead of having it all sized down and do weird things. I think I'm just gonna have it all slide over to the side. We're gonna click on the transform where you're gonna hit center. We're gonna click on the transform node of the subscribe background. We're also going to hit center. I'm gonna click on the transform of the rectangle itself. I'm gonna hit center also. And I need to click on the transform of the picture itself and hit center as well. Then we're gonna go over to 65. I'm slide it over right there. Then I'm gonna click on the transform of the picture. We're gonna slide it over. Click on the transform of that. We're gonna slide it over. Transform of the text, slide it over. 
Now, if we watch the whole thing through, we see it pop up. Name fades out, subscribe pops up on. It's got enough time for people to see it. And then it slides over out of the way. And I'm kind of digging that. The only thing I forgot is I need to fade or slide this thing in. Because I've got about three, four frames to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the transform. We're gonna add a center keyframe. Go back over to number one. And slide it over here. The way it pops up. The last thing we need to do, which I forget to mention a lot, is we need to add motion blur. I don't have that set to automatically do it because it is so extensive on the computer to do while you're editing. So the last thing I do is go into each transform node. So we'll do the first as the background. We're gonna click on the little gear icon right there and we're gonna hit motion blur. We're gonna go to the transform of this one. Go to the gear icon, hit motion blur. Same thing on all of these. We're going to hit motion blur. This is exactly why I like to do everything inside those transform nodes because I know the keyframes are there, the blur is there. Everything that I'm wanting to really do on keyframe or movement is with inside those transform nodes. It's a lot easier to keep all that in one place. Play that all the way through. See if you like it. I actually think that looks really good. Well, there you go, guys. That's how you create a lower third title and subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and drop a comment below. Let me know some other tutorials you want to see in the future or if you've done something quite like this, but maybe you've changed it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'm out. Peace.